Hello everyone, it's Cleo here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Littlest Pet Shop outfit for a bride and a groom. There are of course many ways to do this, but today I'm just going to be showing you the way I do things, which might not always be the most precise, but I like the results, so I'm going to show you how I do it. For the job today, thankfully we have a chapel in the background, but we'll also need a bride and a groom. So today I have chosen these two, because they're popular and they're cute, and later on it will become apparent why we need a collie. We genuinely do need him. They look kind of like brother and sister though. Oh well. Then we need some felt, some ribbon for a bow tie, ribbon and lace for the dress, elastic, a sewing needle and thread to match the colours we've already chosen, sewing scissors, and a little something to decorate with. In this case I have got some satin roses. First of all we're going to be making the bride's dress. Now for this I have already cut a length of ribbon which will make the base of the dress. The length of this is only approximate, it doesn't actually matter exactly how wide it is, it's just how gathered you want it to be. We're going to be gathering this up, you see, so it depends how bunchy you want the dress to be. You can have it be quite flat if you had it very small. Personally, I like to have it quite gathered to make it look kind of more than it is. And then I've cut some lace to the same length you'd think, but it's a little wider because I want to make sure the pattern is symmetrical, so I have to cut a little extra, and I will trim it off to make it symmetrical once I have, for the first step here, sewn this here, stop from fraying away into nothing, which is already trying to do. We've got our trusty sewing needle here and our white thread, which we're going to need plenty of. So what you need to do is to start it out, you need to do what I call anchoring it, which means going round and round several times in the same spot at the beginning there, making sure you fold it around plenty because you don't want to be too short with doubling it over at the end here. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to sew down here, down here, and here. And I'll show you how I do that very carefully and at the end we need to anchor it again. I won't show you every time I do this but I'm going to show you how I keep the stitches nice and tiny. So first of all what I'm going to do is go a little deeper in here I'd say it'd be good. Come through that side. Because this is all white it's really, really difficult to see I think but I keep it really, really close to where we went in to make sure the stitches on top are really tiny and are bigger on the back so we can't see them. It doesn't look like they're big, ugly stitches ruining my artistic vision for the dress. So we need to go a lot bigger on the back here to get some movement here, and then a little on the front. Then you carry on doing that until you reach the end and anchor it again and then repeat on the other side. Okay, so here we are with everything sewn up. As you can see, there's teeny tiny little stitches here and then bigger stitches on the back, which is exactly what we want. You have to be careful to make sure that you haven't left any little ends like that, tails of your thread. If you have, just remember to snip those off, like so. Of course, this can be any ribbon at all you choose, but I like to make sure I choose a satin because not all these look quite bridal to make it satin. It's also nice and thin and easy to gather so it doesn't get too bulky around your LPS's little tummy, especially since we're going to be putting another layer on top of it. Now, because I've sewn it up now, I can tell how wide I need this to be. I've got the flower centralized there, and I'm gonna trim it right there. Make sure we've got a nice symmetrical look. We don't need that excess there. And then what we're going to do with this is sew it round the back. Make sure it's not raw, the edges on top. And then stitch it here and then at the bottom to make sure it doesn't flap up when we gather it. So basically it's the same rule applies. We need to be very careful, make sure we get an anchor here. Go around, have smaller stitches on top and bigger ones on the back. We're going to need a lot of white thread for this. Now because I find it's a bit small to use pins, you have to be very careful to make sure you hold it in place as you go along. And also be sure to get the right side of the lace because I actually had it the wrong way around there. And so as perfectly symmetrical as possible and when you've got it like that, hold it. Double it over itself. And then I'm gonna start by anchoring it right at the end here. to the side make sure it's all symmetrical we're gonna come in with bigger stitches on the back and then make sure they're nice and small on the front this is very important this time because if we have big ugly stitches on the lace it's just not gonna look very good this is a wedding dress she wants to look fabulous we carry on like that until we get to the bottom stitch on the bottom do the same thing on this side come around the top you get the idea Okay, now I have stitched up here, at the bottom here as you can see, here, 
but I haven't actually stitched up the top and although I would recommend usually you stitch all the way around and do the top as well because I know I'm going to be gathering it I actually am not going to bother stitching this first because I've done it so many times I know what I'm doing but if you have not done this before I do recommend you stitch this first and then gather it so just treat this although I have already stitched it we're going to anchor it on the side and this is important when you're starting to gather something you have to start a little anchor to the side not this side but this side I'm just going to go around several times and then what you have to do is you have to go little stitches and a running stitch here little teeny tiny stitches if you're not careful this can tend to stab you so you have to be very very careful as you go along don't think after you stab yourself think I could stab myself, so let's be extra careful. I'm going to make the gathers nice and small. You can make them as big or as tiny as you like, but this is the size I like to make them right here because it's a very tiny little toy. I think the gathers should match that size. And we to the end, push the needle all the way through, and then pull. Okay, so now comes the really tricky bit, and I don't think I'm going to measure it on her, I'm going to show you what I usually do. I get a short haired cat girl because they're really easy to measure against, and then what you have to do is pull it with your finger here to a point where you think you want it to be, and then pull it around her little middle. Now if it fits the cat properly, it usually fits all the big, si big six, big five pets properly, who's the sixth one? So I want to pull it to about to the point where it's level with the ground here without wrapping around too much, if you see what I mean there. So if I pull it to about that point, that should be good. And then usually it comes a little looser when you would finish measuring, so you pull it a bit tighter again. Hold it with this finger here, find your needle again, hope the thread hasn't nearly come out. Thank you. And then anchor it in the corner to go round and round again. Get your little wedding dress around her middle again to check you did a good enough job on this occasion. I actually have. And then we're going to need the elastic and this girl's bottom out of the way. Then we're going to need the elastic. Luckily I have enough thread left here. If you didn't, it would be the same thing. We're going to have to line this up. Get about that much into the seam really to cover that up. And then we're going to sew in the elastic. So what we do is come through on the other side. Once again, want small stitches on top if we can. But what you do is you basically need to anchor it with this now, go around, make sure it's stitched here, 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 and here. And you stitch it on this part here to make sure it's not kind of flapping. Then I will show you what to do after I finish doing that part. And next is for the really, really tricky bit. And wrap this around here. Pull this under her little tum and then work out how much we need. I'm going to work out it's got to be at most that much. Flip it right there. Measure it round again because now we can get a better gauge of it. Want to sew the dress on top of the elastic. Just make it quite snug otherwise it slips around. So about there. We want to stitch the end to be about there. We're going to hold on to it like that. Realise we clipped just a little bit too much, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to anchor some thread just onto the elastic right there to know where to start with it. Okay, now with our thread anchored right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with the edge of the dress here, make sure it's underneath, and pull the thread through the top of the dress. Once again, careful not to go under your thumbnail like I always do. We're going to go in again and just the same process as the other side. It's just harder because the other side's already sewn. Once you've finished this, the dress will be complete. Next up, I'm going to make a little flower crown for this girl. Now, if you don't have little satin noses like this, they are very, very cheap on eBay, especially if you order them from China. Obviously, you can decorate these dresses any way you want. You can decorate their heads any way you want. But who doesn't want a little white rose flower crown for a bride? Because I can't think of anything better. You could make a little veil somehow, but that seems very antique, out of date. This is very in date. So you're going to need to pick five of the flat roses. Like this one here is kind of too tall. We're going to choose a flatter one, like this one is nice and flat. Okay, so now we've got our five good white roses. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew them next to each other, side by side. They kind of curve around each other then, which means they'll make a nice crown curving around the head. So I'm going to stitch all of those little guys together, and because that's really, really boring, 
and quite difficult to do. So I will cut showing you one I prepared earlier. There it is, a flower crown. I've got some little sticky pads on it, which also you can get very cheap on eBay. If you don't have those, just use a bit of blue tack. And do you see how pretty that will look on her? Do you see how much better that is than a veil? We're not going to try it on with the dress until we have finished her husband-to-be's outfit. Well, lucky for you, sir, we already have a bit of ribbon cut out for your bow tie. And we have a bit of felt for your hat and a little rose for the hat. So first of all, what I'm going to do is as you can see, the length here is mm, pretty much like the length of my finger. You might not need that much, it depends how wide you want this bow tie. It's really very vague here because it doesn't really matter that much. You can choose a thicker ribbon, a narrower ribbon, it really doesn't matter as long as you follow the basic instructions of sewing it round like this. It goes double over itself there, make sure you have it over the top so they're not edge to edge like that. You want it to be doubled over. Just gonna anchor it here. We don't have to be too precise. As long as you've got this centralised, it shouldn't matter too much. And then we're going to sew down here. Once again, it doesn't really matter if being too careful, just keep it centralised. Pull on that thread a bit, we're going to help to gather it along. And then what I like to do is I like to whiz this round here to get a little bow tie look together. I think that's about the kind of size bow tie I want, so just wind it round, like I say, as much as you want to make that as thick or as narrow as you want that bit of thread there and just stitch it in the back. You can use a little sticky pad or blue tack and it will fit him right there. This is a very big one but he's been very fabulous today so that's his look. Okay, after trimming off the excess at the back there we can put that to one side with the other accessories and start on his fabulous little hat for which we will need that rose. We have some black felt here. You can pick any colour you want. I just think black or grey looks most traditional for a groom. And here we have a little pattern I have made. You can find this pattern to print it off yourself in the description below. Of course you can just make it up if you feel like it, making it bigger or smaller, but I find this works really well to fit over the ear of a collie. And I say I need a collie because it was made to fit over his little ear. It will fit other LPS with an ear that sticks up like a short head cat or a Great Dane, other dogs as well, but it was made with him in mind because I like little collies. He's my favourite of the popular boy pets, you know, I mean any of them can be whatever you want just according to standard LPS rules, which bizarrely we have. If you want to, however, you can still make this and blue tack the hat down to any LPS head. It's, just, it's easier if it fits over his little ear like it was intended to. So what we have to do is we have to cut this out. Because what I need to explain to you now is the crown of a top hat is what curls around like that and will fit over like that. The brim is the bottom of it and inside here is the measurement for the top of the hat. So very, very carefully cut along that line and you'll have the top of the hat, which will be the perfect measurement then to go at the top, as I suggest, of the crown. And then the crown will be sewn along the inside of the brim. So it's easiest to fold it in half as I have done and then unfold it. And because we're going on to black felt, this is going to be really, really difficult. It's good if you can get an already straight edge for this. This is nice and easy, this part. So basically what we need to do is line it up here cut the felt here, holding it firmly in place, and then cutting it straight along here. And there we have our crown. It seems to be pretty even, so I'm happy with that. What we need to do is have this held in place here, cut along here, and then cut out the middle part, which, if we're careful enough, will double as the top piece. Don't worry if you do screw up the middle, though, it gets pulled through wrong. You can just use this and trace around it separately. I think you can imagine how to cut things out, and this is just so difficult to do on camera, I'm going to quickly do it off camera. So here it is cut out. At this scale I find it is absolutely impossible to make a perfect circle, but I also find at this scale you can't tell if it's not a perfect circle once it's all sewn up, so it really, really doesn't matter. You're going to want to have plenty of this because it's much easier to just have all in one length the whole thing. Okay, first step is wrapping this around itself to make it a three-dimensional shape and then just test it against the brim see if it's about the right measurement once again i'm not being too picky about this because it's so small i can usually make it work anyway i'm just gonna anchor it right here it's very difficult showing you this with just black on black but i think you get the idea and if you don't, you probably shouldn't be attempting this because you might need a bit more practice doing something easier because I've been doing this for years, I'm still finding this difficult at this scale.
Okay, there we go. Here comes the really tricky part. What I'm going to do is that will stay on there. I'm going to. It, it will, please. Oh, see, this is so hard. I'm going to sew the crown onto the brim here, little stitches all the way around. And this is just going to be way too hard to do on camera. That's how difficult this is. I just can't do it on camera, even if I wanted to, which I definitely don't want to. Okay, the top hat is coming together now. I have stitched it all the way around here. And the way I did that, I can explain better now, is by holding the brim like that and then just stitching it here. So now I'm going to bring this thread up through the seam of the crown, as they call it. And then I am taking the top I'm doing basically the same thing, but the stitches will have to be on the outside because I just can't turn this hat inside out. That's not going to be possible. Like that. I'm going to be stitching all the way along here with little stitches. Okay, with that sewn through, we're going to work our way down through that seam again. Okay, what I want to do is just go through the back of the flower here. Basically just sew this flower on the back there and then it will be done and we'll have the outfit finished. And here are the little outfits I've made today with a little necklace so she doesn't look so naked. Now of course this is only one example. Those little dresses can be made basically any way you want. Little flower crown, you can do that any way you want. You can decorate them any how you want. There are no rules, this is just an example. A template if you will and you can expand upon it as much as you please. And then here's another bride and groom example which looks pretty different. We've got a grey hat which I personally like better. And then we've got a much fancier dress, which is just a lot more difficult. It's the same satin ribbon, but we've got lace here that was gathered up first and then stitched on, which is just so much harder to do and so much more time consuming than the more simple one. Like I say, it's just about getting creative, doing what you please. And I do believe if you are not so experienced, doing something a bit simpler will be a lot easier and you'll be a lot happier with it than trying something harder and messing it up the first time. And if you don't really like the idea of sewing one yourself, but you think, hmm, it'd be great to have one, I will be selling LPS wedding dresses and little top hats and bow ties for the LPS grooms very, very soon. And I might already have them by the time you watch this video, so check out the description below to see if it says coming soon or if I've got them already ready. Already ready. Anyway, if you attempt to make this yourself, please let me know in the comments below. Send me a picture on Instagram or Twitter or anywhere else I am on social media. Check out the links in the description below. I would absolutely love to see any attempts you make. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.